that's on the milestone win. I want to start by asking about your sophomores. Uh, did their play today reinforce just how important they can be to this team? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, <clears throat> it's, um, you know, it's, it's a game where you, uh, you know, you try to take advantage of, of the talents that, that you have. And, and, and certainly Aubrey showed that today, you know, what, what she can do and the different ways that she can help your team win. Um, I think she out, she got more offensive rebounds than the rest of our team combined, I believe. Um, she just, you know, she's a kid that works really, really hard. And, um, and there's some things that she's still learning and, and, but the energy level that she brought, that she brought today, especially and how she, um, you know, just, impacted the game in so many ways. And Anna, you know, Anna's, you know, she's got to get better at certain things as well as, you know, anyone else. But, um, you know, she does give us another passer. She does give us another shooter. And um, may not have been the greatest decision in the world to change the starting lineup, you know? So I think it helps Anna, maybe. You know, coming off the bench like that, it settled her down a little bit, but I don't think it helps our team very much. So um, we'll have to rethink that. We'll see. But no, I was really, <clears throat> I was really proud of them, as well as the other other guys that came off the bench today. I thought, um, I thought that group had a really good day. Well, for Paige, uh, unlike last game where she uh, looked tentative, in your words, didn't seem to look like that today is the next step for her to have that attack mindset in a string of games well I think there's a there's a little bit of a difference between being tentative and and uh, being stubborn and not very bright so um, she's she's usually not tentative I don't I, I've never seen Paige be tentative but I have seen her be stubborn and not very bright. And today she was, um, uh, she was less stubborn and less not bright. So for, you, for, for somebody like her, she should never pass up opportunities. And the more opportunities, the more she takes advantage of those opportunities, the more she looks at the basket, the more she looks to, to score, the more opportunities she gets to make a play for somebody else. So today was, you know, you scored 23 points on 10 shots. That's pretty good. Some guys need 22 shots to get 23 points. What do you think the difference was uh, for Kristen Williams and Olivia Nelson Adota? Uh, and did the layoff have something to do with it? I don't know. I mean, everybody else had a layoff too. So uh, I don't think you can chalk it up to the layoff. I just think they got to play better. Sometimes it's that simple. You know, they got to play with more urgency and they got to play better. Not that complicated. Sometimes, you know, we, we try to read in, you know, we try to look real deep into, sometimes it's pretty easy. You just got to be better. You just got to be better. Thanks coach. Mm -hmm. uh, Eaton, Rob, you want to go ahead? Sure. Do you know, in a year where games, never mind wins are not, assured and, and you get that you get to know that do these milestone wins take on a little bit different perspective for you I don't know I mean um, I don't know anymore I don't know um, I, don't, I really don't I don't know what I don't know what any of it and I don't know what any of it means anymore. You know, um, we had a game today. Maybe we have a game Wednesday. Maybe we don't. I don't know. Uh, we were supposed to have game Thursday. We didn't have a game Thursday. So, you know, today was game number seven for us. You know, we're just trying to get to number 13. 
So right now, the only number that matters to me is 13. So we got to get the 13 games so that we can qualify for the NCAA tournament. Um, the other stuff, um, um, you know, when, I would like to think that if you've done something for 37 years, whatever it is, that you're going to have some milestones. Um, and if you're fortunate enough, you have some pretty important milestones. And if you are lucky enough to, you know, to be surrounded by the people that I've been surrounded with, um, they're, they're actually meaningful milestones. And um, I'm sure someday I'll look, be able to look back on all those and, you know, appreciate it when it's all over. Dan Connolly. You know, today was Avina's third or fourth game with double figure scoring. What have you seen from her as she's acclimated to the program and gotten more time at, with UConn? I thought she showed a, a real assertiveness today. I, I thought she was very, uh, very aggressive in her approach. I thought there was a, uh, she instigated a lot of a lot a lot of stuff instead of waiting for for it to happen. And I think she noticed that that there were opportunities there um, if we would strike quickly and and um, you know he doesn't get to practice much. You know she's still not one hundred percent with her with her knee. So some days she gets quite a bit of time on the floor. Some days she gets not so much time on the floor. Um, you know, and I think if we played more games, there would be a, more of a, um, you know, a flow to how we would use her and what the minutes would be like and when. And so she's kind of learning all this on the fly. But these last couple of games, I've seen an assertiveness about her in a lot of ways too, offensively, defensively, leadership wise. Um, I'm really proud of her because it's not the easiest thing to come back from, you know, when your game is based on, you know, moving and quickness and agility and, you know, you have the issue that she had. It's not easy. It's not easy. So I'm really proud of her. And today she really took over that, that group. She really did. Alexa. Hi, Gino. Uh, with Aubrey moving forward, or what you at least have seen from her today, was the break helpful for her, you think? Was it just getting more practice time for her to be comfortable putting her in the right positions to succeed? What do you think, I guess, made the difference today? And you guys are hoping that she'll be able to continue to do moving forward to be more consistent. Well, as we go as we go forward in this season you're gonna you're gonna come to realize all of you that when you ask me a question that involves what do I think you know it's gonna be like what I'm gonna say something that I think just I'm gonna make up because I have no idea what they're thinking zero so if you ask me what's the difference between Aubrey today than Aubrey yesterday I would tell you I have no idea if you ask me, how will Aubrey be tomorrow relative to how she was today? I would have no idea. If I did tell you, I'd be lying. So for me, it's just like every day I show up and I'm either pleasantly surprised that Aubrey's like she was today or um, disappointed that she's not. So this week, this past week, she's had three or four days where she's been really, 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 really good. So I'm hopeful. Now, I we could have practice. We have practice Monday, and it could be, you know, I might stop practice right in the middle and go. Hold on a second. I got to text Alexa because she's not going to believe how bad you are today. So you know, I, I have no idea. I, I really don't. And and that's that's really with a lot of players. And I don't I don't, I don't think that's just me. I I just think in in today's world the the, the the circumstances that we're living in right now and how it is, everybody's like this. 
they're sideways, they're up, they're down, that it's, you just never know what you're going to get. You just don't. Doug Bonjour. Hey, Gino. I just wanted to ask you about, you know, some of your, your freshman, Nika and, and Mir, just really honestly hadn't played as much and went to them early today. Just how significant, um, you know, they're, you know, getting that time could be moving forward for them, you know, what they're able to offer. Uh, text Alexa, whatever she just wrote down to her question, write it down to your question. I, again, I go back to, I like to think, you know, when I see what they're capable of doing, that they're able to build on that every single day. But them being them and freshmen being freshmen and this year being the way it is, again, you know, um, <laughs> it, we need their energy. So if you ask me, what what do you want from Nika and what do you want from Mir? We need their energy. And and they bring that. That's the one thing I know I'm going to get from the two of them. Every day, every practice, every drill, we're going to get that energy from the two of them. The other stuff, eh, you know, we may, may not, may, you know. But I, I think the two of them, when they get in, uh, hopefully they do the things that in practice – you know, come out as energy players, you know, just that. And for now, that's what we need. That's good. For now, that's good. Joe Zone. Gino, it looks like Paige takes shots from places on the floor where a lot of players never shoot from. Are those plays designed for her? Or did she, does she just kind of get there and go? Um. Well, first of all, she knows where she wants to go. And that's a big, big part of why she's, you know, able to, to get those shots in the first place. She knows where she wants to go. And two, she knows how to get there. Like a lot of people know where they want to go, but they don't know how to get there. So she knows I want to go to that spot. And I know what route I have to go to get there and what route will get me open when I do get there. So she's, she's very good at, feeling and seeing and reading the game. And that is either with the ball in her hands, with, without the ball in her hands. Um, she thinks the game. Um, and she knows she has the green light to shoot um, pretty much anytime she wants from wherever she wants, because I trust she's not going to take ridiculous shots. Um, and she came over during one, one possession. We were on defense and she comes over and she said, Hey, number whatever, two, three, whatever number that kid was. And she said, uh, she's got two fouls. So we ran something for her. She caught it in the lane and scored. It was easy. Like she just posted the kid up, caught it, scored. So now the next time down the floor, because we didn't call it and because, you know, it was too easy, we decided to run something really, really way different. So otherwise we might've fouled the kid out in like four more possessions, but like, ask me again, what they're thinking. I'll see if I can help you. Thanks. Vicki, you want to go ahead? Hey, Gino. Um, yeah. What, what got you guys into gear today? Like what, what kind of just, just figuring out who to put out there, which combination of kids, like honest couple threes or what, what do you think got you guys into first gear today um again you need to stop asking me questions about what i think <laughs> um i know what i did what i did was i subbed so we put a group of players out there that picked up the tempo and that's what changed the game um it was it was really that simple you know and what was i thinking at the time i I was thinking we need to change the tempo of the game. We need to change the, you know, the way the game is being played. So we did. And, um, and it did, it changed. But you, you, uh, you realized that very quickly after the game started that it, it was, uh, Oh yeah. Not yeah, it good. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't take you long as a coach. It doesn't take you long as a coach to figure that stuff out, but you can tell. And, and especially in, in, in today's world that we live in, where there's no crowd, 
there's nothing going on out there. So you have to bring it. And either you bring it, and it's evident you're bringing it, or you don't bring it, and it's evident you're not bringing it. So it doesn't take very long. I'm sure even you guys probably thought about it way ahead of me. Way ahead of me, you guys probably thought, oh, yo, man, you got to get these guys out. So you were right. Make note of that. Carl, you want to go ahead? You know, I know I bring this up a lot, but um, this is a 1,000 games without back-to-back -back losses, and you've only won 936 of them. So I don't know if you can put that in perspective, but uh, the other part, my question is... We, Carl comes up with some bizarre stuff, man. Go ahead, keep going, well, man. Well, three people have won 1,098 games. No one's gone 1,000 games without losing back-to-back -back games. So I'm impressed by that. Uh, the other part is... For my question is, you know, being that it was Providence today for these milestones, did you ever reminisce at all about the great games you had your first decade here? And, you know, Providence was one of the one teams you were trying to catch when you uh, came to the Big East. Yeah, it, it might have been you <laughs> that asked me that question back in the day. Said, uh, you know, how will you know when you've, when you've reached a certain level in the Big East, I said, well, we want to be Providence. I said, if we can be Providence, hell, man, we're going to be really, really good. If we can be Providence in Villanova, we got it made. Like, once we get there, then we know we're good. So those games between us and the Friars were always great, great, great battles. Always. You know, Bob Foley was there. He's doing a great job there. And, you know, they, they had great players and great tradition and, you know, and the same with Villanova, you know, and Harry, uh, you know, back in the day, those two teams were really, really hard to play against. And they were, the, they were the two best teams in the big East. So, you know, if we could beat them, man, we're like, we got it. You know, this is like dying and going to heaven. We beat Providence and we beat Villanova. And, you know, the, it did cross my mind today when we were getting, you know, when I was, coming over to the to Gampo about we're playing Providence College. When was the last time we played Providence? Got to be a long time ago, right? Right? It's got to be a long time ago. 2013. Wow. So, you know, who was coaching there then? Ooh. Was Jaber? it uh, who? Jim Jaber? No, 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 no. No, was it uh, Susan Robinson? That sounds great. Ah, uh, uh, don't, don't tell me I stumped you. I'm telling you. So yeah, strange world today. I stumped you. How about the, the uh, thousand, how about the thousand games without back-to-back -back losses and the consistency that has to come with it? I mean, I know you only lost sixty-four times in that, and so um, um, I mean, that's just you know, if you think about that, it, you know that that's just one of those things. I mean, I, I don't know that. First of all, I. I've been lucky. I've coached a lot of kids that get pissed off when we lose. Now, I don't know if that's the way it is today in the world, but all these years that I've coached at Connecticut, when we lose a game, guys are really pissed. And it doesn't take much for me to get them ready to go the next game. So there's this, you know, mindset at Connecticut where when we lose a game, everyone takes it personally. There's no, well, you know, just one of those things. We'll get the next one. Don't worry about it. No, it, it, it is for all those years going back, however long you want to go back, losing, whether we lost four games or five games or one game those years. Losing a game at Connecticut was life changing for a lot of these kids. We'll go back to Doug. You know, I want to ask you in the uh, second half, you've three of those timeouts, you've left the huddle and I think you handed your clipboard to uh, Autumn. Just, yeah. Just Autumn? You know, Autumn got a 4 0. So I never got a 4 0. So maybe the players know that and they wanted, I thought they'd be more interested in listening to somebody that was smarter than them and smarter than me. Because what I was saying wasn't really registering. You know, 
So I thought Autumn would be great. And, you know, she was ready, too. She sat down, started drawing stuff up. That's why I didn't go back. I thought, oh. I mean, she's from Louisiana. And, I mean, they understood half of what she was saying, but they got most of it. Uh, Mike, Anthony, you want to go ahead? Hey, Gino. Hey. The early days and... Hey, you know, if you put on one of those things with that hat with horns on, I swear I saw you on TV the other night. I <laughs> <You> love it. <laughs> I know it wasn't you, though. You're smarter than that. <laughs> I mean, no. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. yeah I, I didn't realize what you were actually referring to at first. At first so no, <laughs> that was not me. <laughs> it wasn't you. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> Listen, um, thinking back to the early days, uh, you know, you've touched on a little bit of everything in this press conference. When did these press conferences start taking place for you and your program? Was it the, like in advance of the first Final Four run? When did when did like coverage as it is now start to be part of your everyday life or part of every game? Do you remember? I, mean, I can't imagine those early days you were getting asked many questions after those. No, it, ha it had to be 1995. 94, 95, right around Yeah, there. it wasn't, okay. It wasn't before. No, it wasn't before yeah. that. Because I remember going to the Final Four, actually going down to the regionals in Philadelphia in uh, 1991. And I remember we had to do these, you know, NCAA, you had to do these. Yeah. And I thought, all right, well, I don't have to talk to like 15 people. I just got to do it one time, all right? Here we go. They're going to ask me stuff and I'm going to tell them. And afterwards, I'm like, that wasn't that bad. Well, I mean, 30 some years later, like, take the knife out of my ears, you know, and, but, and, you know, it, it probably, the very first one we ever did was probably 1991, but other than NCAA tournament, where you're forced to do it at the regionals, I don't remember ever doing any, mm -hmm. never, never, I don't remember doing any. No, certainly not after games like this, you know, no. It was, so it was, it was 95 that changed everything, not the first Final Four run. Yeah, no, it was 95. 95 changed everything. That, that became the, you know, the springboard, really. Um, yeah, 95. 95 was, 95 was a, a magical year, you know. It really was. Yeah. I know I was only 25 years ago, 26 years ago, but man, seems like a lifetime ago. Uh, one day in the regular season against Tennessee, right in that building, that was, that real, that changed everything. Obviously the national champion yeah. changed everything yeah. to a different degree, but. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that Tennessee game on Martin Luther King day was probably the, 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 the event. It was, that, that was the, the single moment in Connecticut basketball history that probably, you know, pushed that snowball down the hill to, for the very first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I used to, I used to, you know, I used to enjoy these. They were fun. I used to enjoy it more when I would tell Rebecca to go out there and, you know, let her do her thing because she was really good at it. The media, it didn't take long for the media to catch on that if they would ask me some leading questions, I would say something that was really bad and then they would run with it and then I would have to defend it for the next two weeks. So I stopped doing that. I'm much more politically correct now. Thanks, Gino. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, um, Coach Oriam, and this is Michelle, forgive me. Uh, I was just on Don's Zoom um, and Don Staley's and, and yeah. talking to Kelly Harper about this yesterday. And both of them talked about how, you know, their players, when they make, if you will, um, statements like kneeling or whatever, they sometimes have to deal with um, fans, their own fans who, who may turn against them. 
I, I don't know that that is as much a case in Connecticut as it might be in South Carolina or Tennessee, but um, I'm sure you've had players and former players have to deal with fans who don't like them speaking out. Mm -hmm. um, how, what do you tell them? And that's even your, your older former players like a Sue or a Stewie who have spoken out so much. What do you, what do you tell them about, you know, I guess having the courage of your convictions, if you will. Um. I don't think there's any school or any city or any town, or any college that's immune from the double standard that exists in sports, where we appreciate everything that you do on the court or on the field. We really do. We cheer for you. We love you. And when you lose, we kind of don't, you know, we don't feel as good about it, but we still you know, we still feel a certain feel for you. But then when you start to inject some of your viewpoints that go above and beyond basketball, all of a sudden there's a segment of the population that's going to say exactly what has been said in the past, you know, whether it's shut up and dribble or you know, you're just a basketball player, so shut up and play basketball. Or you're just a basketball coach, stick to basketball. As if just because you're a basketball player or a basketball coach, you don't have a right to express an opinion, a feeling that you have about what's going on in the world. That that should, that that because you you play a sport that that eliminates your, your personal right to express an opinion. And that's what happens. And that's what has, that's what has happened. And it's happened at every college. It's happened at every pro uh, franchise and it's happened, you know, at Connecticut and it's happened, I'm sure in South Carolina and Tennessee and everywhere else. And it, it's a double standard that these kids live with. We love you as long as you're just playing basketball and winning games for us. But the minute you step up and say something that we don't agree with, the minute you do anything that we don't agree with, we're going to turn on you. Not, not just say, hey, we love you. We just disagree with you, but we, we, we kind of don't, don't agree with what you did. No, it turns really ugly at times. It really does not unlike what happened the other night that we had to see, you know, it's just, it's almost hard to believe we've been talking about basketball this week, right? You know, when you, when you think about what we just witnessed, it's hard to think about what, that we've been talking about basketball, that it's really, you know, you know, people talk about we really need sports because it brings the country together. It galvanizes people. It gives us something to, you know, do during these tough times, you know, these hard times. But does it really? I don't know. You like to think that it does, but again, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's just, but when I read it, you know, when I read some of the comments that people say, not just about our players, but any players. And it's, again, it's, it, it's not 90, maybe 98% of the people that follow your program are, uh, are going to be with you through thick or thin, but they're not going to, they're not going to let you know that they're with you. They're just not against you. So, but that 2%, they're going to be loud, loud and loud and louder. So it just makes it look like, you know, like what happened the other night, like they represent the entire country, which is, is mind boggling, right? Mind boggling. <clears throat> Wait, we have one more for you. Uh, Coach, your hair looks really fluffy and fresh today. What kind of product did you use? 
Um, what kind of product did I use? Yeah. I actually don't have any product, but I noticed that it was getting really dry. So I thought I would try to use some of your sweat, but I noticed you never sweat because you don't exert yourself defensively at all. So that's probably, it's a lot drier than you think. You oh, man. It looks good. I don't know. It looks good. Uh, it looks good. Well, why are you surprised? <laughs> I was just wondering if I could get some of that product in my hair. That's all. When you get hair as nice as mine, you can have my product. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's what they say in Minneapolis. Okay. You betcha. Anything else for coach?